and welcome to Barnes Takeout. My name is Nancy Ison. I'm the Gunn Family Chief Curator at the Barnes Foundation. And I'm actually at the foundation today, which is very exciting. Uh, I'm in my office, but I am going to take you to the galleries. Um, and I'm going to show you a painting by an artist who I absolutely love, Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, uh, the French 19th century painter who was best known for his depictions of Paris nightlife in the late 19th century. Now, what you see before you is a shot of the north wall of room 22. So we're upstairs in the foundation. This is a room where you see a lot of African work. And you also see a very large Cubist painting um, from around 1913 by Roger Le Fresnes, uh, which is about marriage and relationships. Um, I don't know whether Barnes had that in mind when he put the painting we're going to talk about by its side. But we'll, uh, well, that pairing will become clearer as I tell you a little bit more about the work in question. So if you just look towards the door uh, above the chair, you'll see quite a subdued canvas, um, you know, distinguished by its browns and its reds and its little flecks of white. And it's called Amon Rouge, Rose la Rouge. Uh, so just to sort of roughly translate, uh, in Mont Rouge, which was a part of Paris, Rosa la Rouge, uh, and Rosa la Rouge is a character, Rosa the Red. Um, what we have here is Toulouse-Lautrec imagining a character from a song. And let's just look a little more closely at the painting. Now, Rosa la Rouge, was a character in a song, as I mentioned, and the song was by a very popular singer at the time called Aristide Bruon. Bruon sang in a working class dialect in Paris, and he was very popular in the nightclubs. Um, sometimes people said that people, you know, visitors went to hear Bruon sing because they wanted to be shocked. He talked about things that people didn't talk about, um, you know, the tough side of life, uh, the sex trade, uh, people struggling with alcoholism or addiction. The song Amon Rouge, uh, which Rosa La Rouge stars in, really describes her as, as a prostitute who lures clients into sort of precarious uh, places so that her pimp can take advantage of them, um, you know, robbing them, perhaps even, um, you know, there's, there's overtones of murder within the song. It's quite sinister. And here, interestingly, we get a feel for that character, not from, um, from any kind of enticing dress, but rather from a menacing body language. Lautrec creates a body that is tense and taut and doesn't even look at us. Um, if you see this very almost defiant turn of the head, which he describes in a very economic way. Uh, if you look at this, this, this high resolution picture, you can see how he's using the texture of the canvas. And there's a very drawn quality to the way that Lautrec paints. Um, he, he uses a very thin down paint and he uses it quite sparsely. Um, there isn't any, any real depth physically to this painting. All the depth is created by the clever placement of colour. The other thing that we know with, with Lautrec's painting is that he loved a matte surface. Uh, he, he really didn't like his works to have any kind of varnish on them. He didn't like them to shine. And here you see uh, what effect that creates. Um, it really spares us any sense of gloss uh, this is a, a roughly hewn work, and that really seems to fit with his choice of subject matter. Now, we know that the model that Lautrec uses for this work, and indeed for, a, for over a dozen others, is a woman called Carmel Goudin, and she was a laundress. So she was somebody that made a living washing clothes. Uh, the blouse she's wearing is quite typical of that line of work. And Lautrec had seen her when he'd been out dining with a friend and he was attracted by her red hair. 
uh, this seemed to be something that he he really fixated on and, and the works that he makes of her always make a feature of her red hair. In this instance, you see how that red aligns through the, the hair tie at the back of her head, uh, the colour actually in her auburn hair. And also, I think most brilliantly, this little flash of red that makes her mouth, again, so economic there. Uh, Lautrec really just having this incredible confidence as he paints. Now, funnily enough, after, you know, three, three, three or so years of painting Carmen, Lautrec loses interest. And we know that this is because he, you know, he writes this actually in a letter to his biographer, um, a close friend of his, Ghazi, that she changed her hair from auburn to brown. And at this moment, he loses interest entirely. Uh, it does seem to be that it's this formal quality that that really acts as a, as a magnet to him. And of course, here, I think there is this wonderful sense of it fitting so well with the character from the song, um, Rosa La Red, or Rose, yeah, Rosa the, the Red has not only connotations of her, uh, her sensuality, but also of the, the sort of murderous undertones of the song. And, and it, unfortunately, Rosa meets a, a rather sad end in, in Bruant's tale as she's, she's eventually murdered by her pimp. Um, again, Lord Trek did not shy away from the, the underbelly of Paris. Uh, he too, I think, liked to test the boundaries of, of taste and, and yet somehow there's a sensitivity there too. Um, he did know people well within the, the sort of bohemian world of Paris. He got close to his models. He became friends with his models. Um, so I think it's, it's interesting to, to wonder about the circumstances in which this picture was made. Um, you know, somebody posing as a character, Lautrec really fixating on their individual features as something that could tie into that, that, that fantasy, if you like. And, and again, just a fabulous painting in terms of the handling of paint, the, the confidence it shows us, um, and just, you know, even in the detail, like this window here, just this lovely freedom that you see as he almost sort of, um, you know, works his brush out against the dryness of the canvas. So next time you're at the Barnes Foundation, be sure to take a look in room 22. And I hope that like me, you'll develop a, a very soft spot for Lautrec. <laughs> In the meantime, stay well, and I hope to see you soon. Very best. Bye-bye. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.